Okay, so let's take a break from whatever it was we were doing last time and go back and do something else. I've been using for a while a example um, method in the scroll pane class. So let's open up the browser and find the scroll pane. Actually, let's show you a way of doing that. Let's say scroll pane and browse it. Nope, has to be capitalized. Scroll, pane, and browse. And that opens the browser up, don't need the other one, to the uh, class that we just typed in. If I had typed in a method, it would have given me a, a method to look for as well. So, there happens to be an example here called example one, which creates a window puts a scroll, uh, creates a scroll pane, creates a paste up morph that you can push, put things in, resizes that paste up morph so that it's a thousand by a thousand pixels, adds the paste up morph to the scroll pane, adds the scroll pane to the window, I believe covering the entire window is what that little bit of code here means from zero to one, meaning basically 100%. And then window open in world. And if you do that, what it does is it will basically open the window, but it's not, it's not that useful except as an example of how to create a scroll pane. Because watch what happens. If we go my scroll colon equals scroll pane example one and do it it opens up a nice window but ooh, there's something a little odd about this what is that it's opened up an inspector on the scroll pane class well hmm I, you know I mean that's nice but I wanted to work with this window so what can we do? Well, let's uh, rename this to new window with scroll pane and return the window instead. So we do the little caret mark there, which, set, which says return. In other words, when the method finishes, it's going to hand back whatever we're, we're talking about, which in this case is the window, and it's going to give it to, uh, it's going to put into this variable my scroll. So let's try that again. Save it. Type my initials. And now we're going to say new window with scroll pane. And what happens? If I've done it right, then when we evaluate this code, we get the same thing. But now if we inspect, we get a system window which happens to have in it all the submorphs, including the scroll pane, which itself contains that paste up. The paste up being what we generally put things into so we can have things scrolling around. So, this is nice. Now we have a new method that returns a, a prefabricated window with a scroll pane, but we can go better than that. How about this? Instead of returning the window open in world, let's return an array. You can make an array by doing this. Window and a space and then scroll pane and a spaced and paste up 
morph. And return it. So what does this return? Well, if I remember the syntax correctly, new window with sub new, let's call it new scroll window with sub morphs. Scroller window with sub morphs. Okay. So, now, what does this do? Well, it just created a new um, method, class method, and it's going to return, if I did the syntax right, an array with the object we just created called window, the object we just created called scroll ping, and of course the paste up morph. Notice I don't need a period at the very end of a method. But you do need a period before, in the next line before. So anyway, let's save it. There appears to be no syntax errors. So let's go ahead and do this one and watch what happens. Okay, so again we get a window. Let's inspect the variable we just created by doing a command I. And now we have, sure enough, an array. The first part of the array is our window, which happens to be Oh, okay, I did it slightly wrong. I returned an array with <clears throat> symbols. So let's try that again. What I wanted to do was this. think. Like I said, the syntax I wasn't quite sure of, and now I hopefully am. So this is the different way of creating an array dynamically, and I believe this is the one that's going to return what we wanted. So let's try it again. Do it again. Sure enough, we get a window again. Now let's inspect and see what we get. We again get an array. It's a systems window. That's the object we the first object in the array, a scroll pane, and the second object, and a paste up more, and the third object. So that's what we wanted. Notice the two different ways of creating an array. One created an array of symbols, and the other created an array of the objects. The symbols were actually basically, um, <sighs> how to explain symbols? Symbols are basically text that has been stored in a very special uh, dictionary in the Smalltalk system. There's only one copy of that symbol and it can be used for things like uh, referring to methods. As a matter of fact, when you decide to send a message to an object, what you're actually doing is you're pushing the symbol object on the stack and the message is received by the object, which checks to see, do I define this symbol? Do I know what the symbol means? Yes, then I go ahead and execute this code. So uh, we didn't want symbols, we wanted regular objects, which is what we got. So now if we wanted, we could um, go ahead and start playing with the my scroll array and, and manipulate the the window and the scroller and the sub scroller and all that. So that's eh, nice. That's nice. But I've just cluttered up the scroll pane class. So what can I do? Well, let's um, let's see. Where would we do it? There we go. We're just going to, um, let's go back to scroll pane. Scroll pane. Okay, so we're going to make a new class. 
And do I have a testing testing down here? No, I don't. Oh, yes, I do. All my stuff goes into testing testing. So I'm going to make this... Um, scroll pane subclass scroll pane window and it's going to go into the testing testing and when I save it sure enough there's a new scroll pane or a new class called scroll pane window now let's go back up to scroll pane scroll pane find our class hierarchy and let's do a thing with our right click menu copy up or copy down where is it scroll pane window class okay do I want to save it notice it's got that little dirty mark there so I say yes and now what do I get well it's no longer in the um, well it is actually it's there in our original pane class and it's now You scroll, scroll our window with submorphs. We've put it into our new class. So let's go back up to scroll pane. And do the same thing again. Copy up or copy down. Again, we go down to our scroll pane window class and accept it. Close. And now we can just get rid of this method by deleting it. Remove method, deleting it again. And if we check, we now have a new method, scroll or a new class scroll pane window, with two class methods, new scroll window with submorphs, new window with scroll pane. And now if we want to make a new one, we simply make a new instance of the class we just created and it's got two methods in it and it inherits from our original scroll pane so it's going to have all of the methods available that were in scroll pane notice scroll pane now is uncluttered this is uncluttered and we've just created our new class and if we wanted to continue add features to it let's add a new feature just for the heck of it new window with scroll pane with extent extent all right what does this do well it's saying create this paste up morph and instead of saying it's hardwired to a thousand by a thousand pixels add a variable. So let's save it. Notice we have a new method. And now we can go oh, say 500 by 500 instead. Now it's going to create something, a window that has a scrollable area behind the scenes that is only 500 by 500 pixels. So indeed we do it. Ah, we 
because it's not in scroll pane anymore. It's in the scroll pane window class. I forgot everything except to change the name of the class I was going with. So now when we do it, close that error message out. We get our window. Notice that, oops, now it's only going to go with, with an area that's uh, got a, a pane of only um, 500 by 500 for its scrollable area. If we make it smaller, we again see that it's within that error area, everything is scrollable. So you see, we've just created a new um, class with three new methods that has the behavior we wanted. Um, and it was extremely simple to do. I hope uh, you follow this lesson. You can see just how powerful Smalltalk is when you want to make a new class and do things with it.